In this video, I'm going to talk about Krichov's voltage law and Krichov's current law. Krichov is a German physicist born in 1824 um, and died in 1887. So he lived around 63 years. He is the one who invented Krichov's voltage law and Krichov's current law. So, according to Krichov's, um, Krichov or Krichov's people, I mean, pronounce it a different way. I'll go with Krichov's voltage law or Krichov's volt current law. So, according to Krichov's, in any closed circuit, in any closed circuit, um, voltage gain equal to voltage drop. So, in any closed circuit, voltage gain equal to voltage drop. So, how do we know which one is voltage gain and which one is voltage drop? Now, here, um, you can call it, call it a circuit, CKT, similar to circuit. Now, also, there is another way of solving a circuit by using KVL, that's called mesh or loop I will talk about mesh and loop in a minute say for example here is a circuit with uh, one source and four resistors we can easily solve it by using series uh, parallel analysis method but here I'm going to use KVL Krichov's voltage law so according to Krichov's voltage law in this circuit in any closed circuit so is this a closed circuit yes but at the same time in this closed circuit we have more than one loop loop is nothing but I'm going to define loop first so loop is nothing but start at a node and reach the same node without touching any element or any node more than once that's called loop also called mesh there is a small difference between mesh and loop um, so mesh is nothing but the shortest distance loop need not be shortest distance so every mesh equal to loop but every loop need not to be mesh I will talk about it so here I'm going to start from here so starting at this node I'm going to come back to the same node without touching any element more than once okay this is called loop okay same way if I start here this is another loop okay so I have two loops there or I can start there and walk all around and come back to the same node without touching any element more than once that is also another loop now this big one is definitely a loop but for sure it's not a mesh the small ones these small ones I can call this as a mesh or loop I can call this as a mesh or loop but the big one I can call this only uh, loop not a mesh now I'm saying in any closed circuit voltage gain must be equal to voltage drop so if you look at this small loop inside here I'm going to talk about this small loop here voltage gain equal to voltage drop that's a KVL so how do you know which one is voltage gain and which one is voltage drop so this is battery for sure I know this battery voltage this is positive this is negative that is always given for any battery the long line is always positive short line is always negative okay um, so that's that's the battery now when it comes to the resistance resistance always consume energy okay I mean consume it takes electrical energy it gives you uh, either light energy or heat energy so basically it is taking the electrical energy so since it is taking the electrical energy what I'm going to do um, while start walking I'm going to assign this as my positive sign and negative sign I'm going to assign the positive and negative signs by myself so this is positive and negative positive and negative so 
let me label this as v1 and v2 this is v now that's a loop loop 1 i'm going to call this as loop 1 okay this arrow indicates that i'm walking in the direction so in the loop 1 take if you're entering positive sign take that as a voltage drop if you're entering negative sign take that as a voltage gain okay so v drop equal to v gain okay so according to this what i'm going to do which one is voltage drop so here this is a voltage drop since i'm entering the positive terminal if you're entering the positive terminal take that as a voltage drop so v1 is a voltage drop v2 is also voltage drop must be equal to since i'm entering the negative terminal that must be voltage gain so v1 plus v2 equal to v this is the uh, kvl equation now do i need to walk in that direction all the time need not to be you can walk the opposite way and uh, use the same uh, methodology now you don't need to reassign this positive and negative signs i assign this positive and negative signs because i know that the, the battery leaves the current not all the time sometimes it might be recharging we don't know but i'm assuming it is leaving the current so that's how i assign that positive and negative signs now i'm going to do the same thing um i mean i, I will go ahead and start assigning the positive and negative signs again according to my direction so what i'm going to do i'm going to walk in the opposite direction so here i am i'm going to walk in this direction and see how it's going to work okay so according to my walking direction this is going to be positive negative this is going to be positive negative okay i'm going to take this as v2 this as v1 okay now I'm going to apply KVL again here. I mean, I'm redoing it in a different way. I want you to see it's not going to make any difference which way you're walking and it's not going to make any difference which way you're assigning the positive and negative signs. But once you assign, you need to follow the same sequence. That's important. Now, our, I mean, KVL is voltage drop equal to voltage gain v drop equal to voltage gain so here i mean i'm entering the positive terminal take that as a voltage drop okay so v is a drop entering the positive terminal that is also drop and entering the positive terminal that is also drop so everything is drop that must be equal to zero so at the end, what happens here, you will end up with one of the voltages negative or maybe two of them might be negative. Um, or you might end up finding your current is a negative current. That means, say you end up I equal to minus two ampere. We know that current is a vector quantity. We can change the direction and make it as a positive current. Um, so that's about KVL. Let me talk about KCL. In this video, I'm going to talk about Kirchhoff's current law. I mean, it's the same video. I just talked about case KVL. So here I'm going to talk about KCL. So in KCL, we're going to apply KCL at any junction. So here, I'm going to take the same circuit. Okay. So we're going to apply KCL at any junction. A junction is nothing but where more than... Um, two elements connected i mean i can apply kcl at uh, at any node but it's not going it's not worth it so here if you look at at this junction okay so there are three elements connected so i'm going to assume i1 current is i current is entering and it's going to split i1 and i2 okay so according to kcl currents entering must be equals to currents leaving or the matrix sum of or vector sum of the currents entering must be equal to uh, vector sum of currents leaving okay not not uh, number of currents we need to consider the the quantity and that quantity is vector quantity 
So the KCL is at any node vector sum of currents entering must be equal to vector sum of currents leaving. So as I mentioned I equal to I is entering and at the same time I1 and I2 are leaving so vector sum of currents entering must be equal to I1 plus I2. Uh, vector sum we can talk more about vector sum when we are dealing with AC circuits so here still we are with DC circuits we'll don't worry about the vector term or vector quantity okay so whatever the total current entering must be equal to total current leaving it's just similar to water flow in pipes okay water is coming to a junction okay um, assume that the pipes are connected to a junction more than two pipes so say water is coming to through one pipe and water is leaving through two pipes whatever water is entering the same water is leaving okay so none of the water is storing at that junction that's what it meant that's a current flow we can analyze it similar to the water flow inside the pipes so in this video we talked about kvl and kcl thank you